All right, here we are. Got that. Welcome, everybody. Hi, friends. Hi. How's everybody doing? Hello, hello. Welcome. I love all the different the different handles that have versions of either Ian's name or Ezra's name. So that's that's oh, nice. it's rather yeah. hilarious. Uh, well, let's get right to it. Uh, welcome to Between Two Nerds. Yours. Oh, right. We talked about this. We're going to do this the right way. Welcome <laughs> to the. Let me do this the right way. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show that brings you your favorite notable nerds to talk about what they love to do, as well as why voting is important to them. Uh, I'm J.P. Carliac. I'm Courtney Taylor. And this is Between, Between Two, Two nerds. nerds. There we go. All right. We're working we on it, it, but we're getting there. So, um, we have an amazing that's guest. That's what rehearsal gets you. I know. I know. Uh, we have an amazing guest today, and so I'm uh, not going to any time and just bring him on. Uh, he is uh, on Kipo, he's on Chicago Bed, and he's on Pretty Little Liars. Welcome, Ian Harding. How's it going? I guess Woo! I'm on we now, right? Yes. Excellent Great. quarantine beard, my friend. Yeah, it's, it's literally disappearing tomorrow. So, you know, I, I haven't had a chance to uh, grow out any facial hair in like a solid 10 years because I've been luckily uh, employed and I've needed to be clean shaven and all that jazz. So I figured, hey, I'm probably not going to work for a solid four or five months. So why not get some facial hair? Um, and it's fine. It's a little scraggly in the cheeks, but um, it's it's fine. It is what it's it good. is. It's good. It's a shame yeah. that Halloween isn't around. You totally could rock like Infinity War Captain America. You know, that's that's very kind. Um, and my uh, general like quarantine uh, bod, what is it? One of my friends used the phrase, most of my clothes are quarantite. So ah. I'm, uh, I don't know if I'd be rocking any sort of uh, Captain America resemblance, but thank you very much for that comparison. Hey. We don't know how spanky and corseted that outfit was, so. Yeah. Exactly, and you know what? At some point, even Captain America is gonna hit the incredible dad situation. Yeah. So. <laughs> I've, I've already gotten pretty close to that and I don't have a Marvel franchise under my belt. So I don't know if that's a good thing. But um, but I do have your shirt on. So thanks for uh, sending me this. Uh, let's see, awesome. let's see. Can, Can I, I rock the merch? You know, this is sad. This is why I need my friend Shay Mitchell here to show me how to like do the ba ba ba. Um, I'm also Look trying to this. Yeah. Looking good, Ian. Well, thanks. Nice. Thanks. Thanks. I am also I am also rocking the merch today. Where did so where did the the tape on the glasses come from? Is that just sort of like a, a prototypical nerd? Uh... Yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody still. Could, it's it's very it's a very old fashioned portrayal yeah. of nerds, but we figured it is kind of a unifying sort of iconography. Uh -huh. So that's what we went with. Absolutely. Doesn't Eugene right. in, uh, in Greece have it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think yeah. one or two of the people from like Revenge of the Nerds or something, but that's, yes. that's decades ago. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're like, what? Who? Oh, huh? What? Yeah. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, welcome to Between Two Nerds. Uh, we're thrilled to have our guest Ian Harding today. Uh, if you have questions for Ian, feel free to throw them in the little question mark box down the bottom, and yes, hopefully please. we'll get to as many as possible. Uh, so, uh, aside from rocking out your beard, uh, what you've been doing during the quarantine? Oh man. I mean, it, it, it's, um, so like the dichotomy is so huge. It feels like I've actually been somewhat busy. Um, and yet also I've done essentially nothing, but I think the reason that is, is because we boil down, you know, or at least I do what's important to, um, it's designated as what makes, what earns an income and sure. what doesn't. And yep. over the quarantine, everything I've done has not made me money. <laughs> so maybe um, in some ways I've done quite a bit. Like I have a, um, a rather sun blasted garden growing out on my deck right now, which I don't want to show to anybody because it's a little rough, but um, you know, 
I was doing more of that. I was, I've read so many books um, and also cooked a lot and then just sort of chatted with family. I think I tried some businessy things. Like I was like, you know what? I'm going to adapt this book into a screenplay. And then I started and I was like, oh, I'm pretty dumb. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I can't write. Oh. And I was like, oh, yeah. I'm barely literate. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and but some of it is just also like the sort of philosophical, metaphysical journey of being, journey. of feeling like life is on a hiatus. Yeah. And you just having the days. Degree. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you're like, okay, no, we're good. We're good. It's totally fine. Yeah. And then like in the afternoon, you're like kind of crying and maybe you're drunk, but you don't know, you don't remember taking a drink, but you feel drink, drunk, but you, you know, it's but like. But you don't feel drunk, but yeah. you yeah. tell you later that you were. Yeah, and somebody's like, yeah. You when you called them, a bottle of wine. in the fetal position. Yeah. yeah. But for what about yourselves? For I'm, me, I'm it's sorry. the stages of, of what I'm eating with a spoon directly out of my refrigerator. So it starts with ice cream, which is normal and hey, yes. sure. Then yeah. it goes to like, you know, hummus or peanut butter, just eating with a spoon, not bothering with anything. And then you're moving to condiments. And then it's like, oh, I need help. Let me yes. call a friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you're like trying to like I... slice the end of a pickle off with the spoon because you're too lazy to like actually pull it out of the jar. Or, and, or yeah. get another utensil. Right, you know? right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Sorry, go ahead, Courtney. What were you going to say? Well together because I've now come to the handheld ice cream, the mochi balls, mm. where I yeah. just stand in front of the fridge and just eat mochi balls constantly wondering what else I'm going to eat. And then at the beginning of quarantine, I was sort of like, you know, oh, like something fell on the floor. I'm going to toss that. Nope. And now we're just like gonna eat looking it. at each other and like, are you going to eat that? Or am I going to eat that cashew that just rolled under the sink? Okay, great. Yeah. It's she, has a, days she has a stare down with the dog, like yours, mine. Yours, mine. Yours. Exactly. Yeah. Um, brutal. What have you been cooking? Um, I did, uh, I think I've gone through phases of, at one point, um, actually my friend Keegan Allen, who was on Pretty Little Liars with me, like months ago, I went up and visited him. He has a place at the base of uh, the, the Sierra Nevada mountains and it's beautiful. He's redone it. He's like really put a lot of work into it. And he made me this like this meal, but he cooked the meat in a sous vide. Oh, and yeah. It was the best piece of meat I've ever had. And so I've tried to replicate it. So I've been like sous vide a lot, but then also at the same time, I was like, I need to eat less meat because I don't really feel great eating it. And then, so then I was like a slight vegetarian phase, a lot of kale chips. And then like, and now I'm just, again, I think in the condiment phase is what you were describing a little sure. while ago, just yeah, waiting yeah. for uh, this lockdown to be done. But I mean, also banana bread, pumpkin bread, all the sort of, quarantine staples you know just so much so much goddamn pumpkin bread um yeah so, i mean i think yeah. i think if anything we're all getting better at um trying to make use of the things that we still have on the counter or in the fridge like yes instead of just being like oh the ba bananas went bad toss it's all like oh banana bread banana, banana bread yeah. Bana yeah it's banana yeah, bread. we don't have cinnamon so it's Laura Ingalls Wilder you're like yeah. i will make the kale chips myself I, will, I went through that phase where I was just like making everything, baking everything. And now I'm just like, these pizza rolls look really good. Yeah. I'm yeah. just gonna, like we're, we're definitely in like a frozen food phase now where I'm just tired of cooking and being yeah. resourceful. And now I'm just like, just get all the popsicles, yeah. all the ice cream, all the mochi. And speaking a of, of like, like, you know, vegetarian yeah. burritos and uh, we're good. Because you realize, and I like, I, I sort of got to this point a little bit where I, you know, I think went through that moment of, oh, you know, going, especially like back in March, going to the grocery store, we didn't know how deadly something is, how contagious, and, and I mean, we still don't, but like, I was of the mindset of like, oh, I need to leave the house as little as possible. So I bought a bunch of seeds and other things. And when I mean gardening, I don't mean like, I put out some like petunias, like I have like multiple uh, like pole bean plants and oh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. and like nice. you know i tended to this like orchard it's for fruit trees um like so like I've, I've been doing that thinking like i'll live off the land which 
This is mm-hmm. why we invented mod- modern society and Whole Foods because living off the land is a pain in the ass and it like consumes yeah. all of your time. Yep. And one yeah. caterpillar can go through all of your veggies for the day and you're like, you know, I think my neighbors think I'm insane because I'm like swearing like on my deck here yep. at, at nothing. You know, just like effing caterpillars and effing, you know, moths and blah, 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 you know, so. Stupid bumpuses? Yeah, like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. like that kind of thing. So. Yeah, it, yeah my partner, uh, his, uh, he has a plum tree in his backyard. And yes. he is, he's ha- having a war with a squirrel. Like, yes. all yeah. out warfare. <laughs> and you know what? Like, I have a plum tree as well. And it started, like, I saw those things turning like a deep, deep purple. And then the next day, half of them were like on the ground and like partially chewed. And I was like, oh, squirrels. And then I'm doing the dishes because like our little kitchen window overlooks the area where the tree is. And I see a bunch of birds. And like, I love birds, Mm -hmm. like avid bird watcher. And I see this like flock of lesser goldfinches just come in and like just start crushing my plums. And I was like, I'm going to like kill a bunch of birds. I do. Like, I know yeah. you're a bird watcher because you say like lesser goldfinches. Seventy-five-year-old <laughs> yes, be man, because yeah. all I do now is sit on my porch and like drink tea and go like, "Hmm, house finch." Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> like, my so God. Lesser, so, everyone's, you know, bird nerding is a, a huge thing now because we don't leave our house that often. So I'm all into lizards and birds. It's a joy. Uh, yeah. So speaking of, of wildlife, and, and also Courtney mentioned Mochi earlier, is your dog named Mochi? Uh, one of them is. I have these. Okay. These, um, because the litter mate asks, how are your dogs? <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, and this thing just popped up in front of me. Sweet uh, Bajibas. That is, yeah, how are Mochi and Bailey? Um, hi, Alicia. Uh, it's, they're doing great. Um, you know, they are very happy that I'm home more. Um, but I've noticed that, like, actually, they have their routine. Like, mm-hmm. at a certain point in the day when I've been gone, they go down to, like, my office slash it's really their room, and then occasionally I, like, do things in it. Sure. Um, but uh, they're, after a while, they're like, okay, now we're going to go. And if I'm, like, up here doing something, I can see them, I can see them get impatient. They're like, I don't know why we're still up in the kitchen area. Like, we need to be downstairs in the den so we can sleep for the next six hours, you know? Um, <laughs> so they're, I mean, are they great? Yeah, they're the most spoiled dogs. We actually just had, um, there's somebody that moved in to our, our neighborhood and we were walking them and and uh, he was like, oh, you got Labradoodles? Like, oh my God. This is it. And he, I could see him like kind of walk towards Bailey. And Bailey, for some reason, was like, it, we've been trying to like break him of this. He's pretty leash aggressive. And, like, <laughs> and so you don't expect it because he looks like a teddy bear. Mm-hmm. And then people are like, bathe. And then as, the, you know, Bailey's just like, Whoa! you know, so um, they're good. We're, we're training them a little bit. We're trying to have them not be the mean dogs of the street, but they're a sure. joy. So thanks for that question, Alicia. <laughs> um, well, at least they still love you. Because, you know, I feel like a lot of people's dogs, even the dogs who love everybody, are like, yeah. wow, still here? Still yeah, yeah, here. yeah. So like, no life outside the, of this the, house. The bloom is off the rose, even for the dogs. Yeah. Like, you guys have been in the house for a real long time. Yeah, because yeah. they don't sleep. Because they, they need to be around, at least Bailey, the boy, just like, I need to make sure that I'm, I'm within eyesight of Ian at all times. And if I'm kind of, like, getting up and around and walking around doing things or, like, you know, pr- pretending to be a farmer, he's like, well, I got to be outside. And they're like, what, what? And so he's constantly moving and he's not sleeping as much because they need, you know, 18 hours a day or something like that, or however much dogs sleep per day, which is most of the day. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I actually, I love how my face is occasionally being, or at least on my phone, is being covered up um, by, by these comments. One of which I just saw, I want to drown myself in your eyes. I take it as that. <laughs> this is, is going to turn into one of those BuzzFeed videos where we just go through all your thirst comments. <laughs> is that a thing? I've never, I have not seen that. Oh, but. I, I recommend the Daniel Radcliffe one only because people wow. are really creative with the disgusting ways that they say they love Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. That and is. when I say love, I mean lust. <laughs> yeah. Yes, if you guys want to ask a question that's not, Ian, I love you, 
Um, yeah. You can put it in the little question mark box down below, and we'll ask you in a question. Well, um, he, he, I mean, let's just establish that everyone here loves Ian, so you know that Ian, and uh, well, and so if you guys want to talk to him, ask a question. Well, first of all, I'm sorting yeah. through them right now. There's a lot that they love the beard, so just That's FYI, great. maybe yeah. talk to your agent about that. But uh, yeah. uh, we have Take some photos uh, Adora Lucy just wanted to know. Mm -hmm. oh, toothbrush. <laughs> what color is my toothbrush? Oh, it's um, it's white and electronic. So um, that's a really way to go with that question. I, I apologize. I was using that, that as a warm up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what color is my toothbrush? Giving you a few softballs before we get real. Yeah. I mean, if, if for anybody just joining us, this is a we're an organization that promotes uh, voter registration in the nerd communities. Yeah. That's cosplayers, gamers, con goers, and pop culture fans of all kinds. So we're going to be yeah. talking about voting a bit, but we thought toothbrush question. Let's start there. <laughs> yes. Let's, let's right. keep it nice right. and low stakes at the moment. Uh, and also for anybody tuning in, if you notice the pinned comment down at the bottom, um, Nerds Vote uh, partners with this organization oh, yeah. called Motivote. If you're not registered to vote, or if like you are registered, but sometimes you forget like, oh crap, is it November 5th? I missed it. Uh, Motivote is a great way to keep you accountable. There's small little action items that you can take and you can win prizes, which is always cool. So yeah. sign up below. Um, and you can also follow us on here. At yeah. Vote. And on Twitter, um, if you have any problems or questions about voting, we can help you out. And also at nerdsvote.com, you can get Ian's shirt that he's rocking right now, which is our classic Nerds Vote tee. Um, yes, and well. also, if you have any questions about yes, or well. need help um, registering to vote, registering to vote from home, which is mm. a hot ticket right now with this whole yeah. COVID thing. There's the shirt. Yep. Um, uh, that is a great place to go, nerdsvote.com. We have tons of information on there. And we also work with other, what we call notable nerds, like Ian has now joined our ranks. Um, but we have, uh, uh, we've had Rebecca Sugar, who was the creator of Steven Universe, is the creator of Steven Universe on the show. We've had King Ezekiel from The Walking Dead. We have tons of awesome folks that come on our show and just talk about the importance of voting and getting everybody involved. So I hope you'll stick yeah. with us. So yes. along that line, uh, do you have a particularly memorable voting moment? I have a couple. You know, I, um, I, the first time I think that I was really able to vote was in 2008. Um, because I think I, I could vote when I, because I turned 18 in high school, but I don't think I, I either didn't vote or maybe I, I think I was that kind of dumb kid who thought it was like oh well uh you know i don't really believe in these politicians or something and you know you sure. don't you don't realize that um actually this system that we've created is one of the most amazing even though it often does not feel like it um the sort of governmental structures in the world and that we literally get to choose and decide um and anybody who thinks that their vote doesn't matter or that you know, it's rigged or something like that. That's not true. <laughs> That's just not true. Um, and so I was one of those kids that I think the first time that I was able to vote, I either didn't. But in 2008, um, I voted for the first time. And I, I think I've always had um, a mail-in ballot because I was in college at the time in Pittsburgh in 2008 mm -hmm. and was able to vote in Virginia where I was still a resident. Sure. Um, and so I did mail-in ballot there. And then I've done mail-in ballots ever since. Um, and I actually had, um, for some reason, uh, and, I, and maybe I signed up a little while ago, but I, so I'll get it at my house. And maybe because I'm lazy, and I, I, I believe, I'm not sure if this is true nationwide, but at least in California and East LA, um, there's an area at my polling station where you get the mail-in ballot and you can just go and do the thing. And then you could walk right up to the front regardless of if there's a line and there's a little thing that you just drop it into yeah and so i was like great i don't have to wait here like i don't you know if you're if you were a germaphobe pre-covid like even better you don't like you just don't have to be around people a lot um so i i'm a big fan of the mail-in ballot i'm trying to think of like the the 
a memory that like really, I, I think ever since 2008, um, you know, it was, it was like a very sort of, you know, and I don't, I obviously don't want to get too partisan, but it was really interesting to me. Oh, oh yeah. Like this is, this is oh. our country. This is what we can do. Oh, sorry. We were losing you a minute there. No, you know what it is? Um, I, I'm that dumb, dumb that, uh, prepared everything else properly. I have not put my phone on do not disturb. So halfway through this, my mom has called me and I don't know whether she's watching this right now and she's like, you really need to shave. <laughs> but oh, I'm like, no, if you, oh, if you call know. me, I, I get cut out. So, um, but no, I, I've, I've always been, I think ever since, you know, probably the tail end of college, I was like, voting is a, is a real thing. And especially in, um, you know, I was in, I was in New Hampshire in 2016 and um, at, around the, you know, during the, during the time of the election. And, and it was amazing to see that in so many of these little counties, um, some of these counties, the votes and like who, uh, for instance, Maggie Hassan, who won the Senate seat there, like they, those votes were decided, um, or th those like that election was decided by truly a handful of votes. Mm -hmm. And so just seeing that how much the, the smallest, you know, just one person really, really does matter because it adds up. So not to like, not to sound like a PSA or something, but like, that's my, that's my thought um, on that. No, we're we're a little bit PSA, so all good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely true that there are so many. I mean, we talk a lot about the presidential election and even senatorial mm -hmm. races and stuff like that, because we know those people. We understand like the national stage that they sit on. But there's yeah. so many elections that happen at the local level that really affect us more profoundly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. You know, with local policies, whether it's your mayor, your city council, your county, the county sheriff, the district attorney. Judges. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Judges. Yeah. In California, tons of judges. Um, yeah. 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 Um, and those races are often decided by the narrowest of margins. Yeah. Because you. Well, some, you and some of our presidential yeah. elections also. So, you know, it yeah. doesn't matter the size of the race. It really does matter that you, you know, you you learn to use your voice, you know, not only is it for everyone else, but it's also for you. You know, it's important that people understand that your voice matters. And if you don't make a decision, someone is going to make a decision for you. Your lack of yeah. a vote means that someone else gets to decide what you get. And I think yeah. that really goes against everything that we've sort of structured this country around. And, you know, even if you don't realize that um, that sort of everything is touched by politics. It's unfortunate because everyone says, "Oh, you know, I don't want to do politics or anything." But you know, what what money is allotted for the arts? What money mm -hmm. is allotted for um, you know uh, crime um, policing? You know, mm -hmm. we've seen all kinds of things in the news recently about that. And you you pay into the system, so you should have a say in what happens. Right, with right. more money, because I think oftentimes people will go for like the big, the, you know, the big flashy election, which would be the presidential election, mm -hmm. and yet there are so many, or at least um, over the past probably two years in East LA where I live, you know, various city council men and women are are up for re-election or up for uh, election, and and what that means, and and if you actually look at some of their policies that they're proposing, you realize, oh, this affects me on like a daily basis. Like, does this um, does this legislator in the town that I live in, which I'm being purposely vague, I'm sorry, but like, you know, um, there's a, there's a, a road. Town. What's that? But it's, but a, it's great a great town. town. It's a great <laughs> town. This LA town that I live in, um, you know, there's a, there, there was a, a, a movement to sort of create a bus line through this one main drag mm. and how would that affect the commercial properties that were there and how would that affect also traffic in the area because our little corner of the world is relatively traffic free you know which is a, a rarity in los angeles so you know it, it doesn't seem sexy and i wonder if some of it is literally 
if maybe people don't vote because it doesn't feel sexy. And, and, and maybe that's like such a, um, a, a silly way of looking at it. But once you start getting into policies or debating, like, because I'm not really a policy wonk, but like once you sort of get into the nitty gritty, people are like, ah, I don't know if I care about that. But you should care about it because. Well, that, that's what we yeah. started Nerds Vote around was that idea that, you know, if you originally we started at conventions because we wanted to get um, voter education and information and registration opportunities into the yeah. kind of nerd space, which these days is pop culture conventions, as we know. Yeah. And um, and we wanted, you know, if, if someone met you, Ian, at a convention and you had this conversation with them, it would make it sexy. You know, it would make it cool um, to to have someone that you really admire have a talk with you about what's important, it might shift sort of your perspective on that. And that was sort of the whole thing that we started. And it's, and it's, it is, it's getting people excited about it because we're all on the same team. So you get to be on the same team as Ian Harding, as, you know, um, certain musicians, voice actors, yeah. et cetera. But we're all working for this together. And it is a, it is a huge opportunity to be on the same side. Um, yeah. If you take on, this sort of responsibility, but make it an opportunity. It's not just, a, you know, it's not your civic duty. It's your civic opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's such a, that's such a great quote. It's, it's not your civic duty, it's your civic opportunity. That's what I'm definitely going to commandeer that. And closer to November, like, you know, tweet that out. People will be like, really smarty. And I'll be like, yeah, thank you so much. And I just stole it from you. <laughs> no. um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get full credit, of course. I'll just, I'll tag you in every time I tweet it. Um, and people yes, are like, please. Because I want to yeah. see all the, like, I love you, Ian posts. <laughs> They're like, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just I gonna... can pretend they're for me. It'll be awesome. Just don't say Ian. And I'll be like, <laughs> Well, thank you so much. If I had longer, top of uh, longer hair, I would be able to swish it. But no, it's right here. <laughs> you can do the motion. Uh, Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got a. Uh, so speaking of voice acting, I just want to check in with you because uh, I know that you're well known for your what we call face acting um, because we're voice actors. <laughs> um, yeah. You are on a sweet little show called Kipo and the Wonder Beast. Age of the one. Age of the Wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it was it was it was actually the first real animated show that i've done and you know as like we all know um it's such a joy because even though it's just you like it's a different thing um uh i'm telling you something you already know but for the sake of people that are maybe watching this and have no idea like you know I, I was there were no other actors there and it was just me in a booth and i didn't see what the character would look like i just saw like a drawing that's like yeah he's gonna kind of be like a frog in a suit and uh, we just need you to say a bunch of random lines. And, and it's like a different sort of structure, especially as an actor where you're used to getting a scene and you're able to sort of see where it's gonna go. And, and you, you feed off of like your response with a line is often directly affected by what you're getting from the other actor. So when you don't have that, it's all self-generated. But, you know, yeah, I just basically went insane for, like two or three hours, really? And like, I mean, they're like, all right, I think we got it. I was like, and I stopped sweating by the end of it because I was just like screaming. And then every once in a while, like in the same line too, it'd be like something like, something simple as like, get her, or go, go get her or something. I'd be like, go get her. To like, go get her! You know, it's just, yeah. it's a joy. I, I love it. And I take it the both of you do as well. I, well, it pays the bills. Uh <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. love it. We I mean, love. It's great, oh, yeah. and you know what? If you're not sweating, you're not doing it right. <laughs> Correct. Especially yeah. now that we we're working from home, and our little boots and closets and armoires and whatever we're stuffing ourselves into to record are not usually air conditioned, Trunk. so we are oh, right. sweating. <laughs> yeah. When you when you then have to like do um, any work that's with another actor, or maybe when when you find yourself doing face acting, is it almost tricky because you're like, well. I knew how I was going to do, or like I. Oh no, we prefer it with the person. Really? With the other person is always preferred. Um, yeah. Well, okay. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> I will say because I do a little bit of face acting from time to time, and 
when I when I do TV stuff, I I definitely have have been doing it and kind of looked up and been like, who are you? Yeah. That's not yeah. how I, you know, because I constantly am, you know, I'm two people in my head going back and forth. So mm. it can be a little shocking when someone delivers something that you're, you, you know, you've had the, you've had the joy and the opportunity for us to, that you get to sort of, you can surprise yourself, but you may know how it's going. So yeah, yeah. It, it's both jarring and a wonderful opportunity. Um, to yeah, have someone yeah. else in the room. And, and it is preferred, but we do so often not have anyone else in the room that you get in kind of that stride where you're like, yeah, 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 I got it. I know what, you know, I'm saying yeah. to the other person and, and how, what they're saying to me. So, yeah, it's a little strange sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I do miss, yeah. I miss the cast records. I miss, I miss our big radio shows where we all get together and just, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. And laugh and laugh and laugh. So for animation, yeah. obviously, you not obviously, but you do get to cast record, um, whereas video games and stuff are more solitary. And it's yeah. wonderful to go into a room where there's the funniest people in the business doing yeah. amazing stuff, just topping themselves with jokes. And uh, yeah, you don't always get as much done as you would do if it was just you, but yeah, yeah. you laugh till you cry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, go uh, ahead. I was, I was literally going to just... Well, you're doing a great that. job as the frog. I yeah. really, I well really done. like... Um, you're actually uh, one of the henchmen for our friend Jake Green. Um, oh, really? So you're in yeah. good company. Is, isn't that insane that you're like, oh, yeah, you're in the same show as this person, and you have never met them. Like, it's oh, yeah. never... Yeah. You could I, walk right next to him in the supermarket and have no idea. One of my... Yeah. My very first animation credit was a... It was horrible. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I brutally eviscerated Mark Hamill. And it was oh, really? it, like, the scene was cool. And I was like, oh, that's neat. But I never met him. I never got yeah. to interact with him in any way. I just, I just gutted him. <laughs> yeah. And you get that like from friends who are like, so what was that like? Yeah, and I don't know. Like, never met him. And, and, in and my mind, like, it was wasn't, great. <laughs> wasn't that even with, um, I had a friend who worked with uh, James Earl Jones. And at one point, like, they had been working for a while with each other. And he was like, James, I got to ask, like, what? Like, what was Star Wars like? And he's like, well, I don't really remember much of it. And it was pretty quick for me. <laughs> Basically because he wasn't, he was, like, rarely on set, you know? And I don't, I think his whole experience was something. Now, granted, I'm saying this on, on Nerds Vote, so I imagine there's a lot of nerds that are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they know this story backwards and forwards, so I apologize if I'm, like, butchering it or, or uh, um, not getting it right. Uh, but I imagine like it's, it was a different experience for him than it was for like Harrison Ford or Mark Hamill or something because sure. he was a voice. Yeah, like, it's in a movie. yeah, it was just like, you know, and just like saying it over and over again, you know. But now it's the line that like haunts him. You know? like, oh God, yeah. To um, this and, I, and also I don't think he was one of the actor, like, you know, in, in certain movies, they'll have the actor that's doing the voice on set to, you know, to kind of interact off camera with the people, you know, just to kind of like do the thing. But in his case, like, mm -mm, no, it was, yeah. it was David Prowse in that giant costume just doing yeah. all the work. And... See, you do Well, know here's the nerd that's to cool. tell you all about how it really happened, Ian. <laughs> yes. No, great. I mean, tell me. I'm not saying that I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I've just, I've just maybe watched every piece of footage that there is of Star Wars, so. Yes. But yeah. whatever, not a big deal. And um, I just want to say I did meet Mark Hamill. I sat next to him during cast records, and it was, I peed myself a little bit every day. And, but I bet Bye. he was, but I bet he was a totally normal person. And like, have, he was have great. Ever, yeah. He's great. I mean, I, I had to take a step out of the room when they told me to go sit next to him. I had, I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot something in the hallway. Yeah. Rolling your eyes anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, but I, uh, I had to go step outside and like twirl around like a stupid fangirl and then come back in like, okay, yeah, let's just uh, yeah. go to work. Yeah, yeah. But don't you, don't you feel that it's almost like the opposite when, when I've been around somebody who has either been like a hero of mine or like, you know, an actor or a performer or even like an athlete or something and you're next to them or you're near them and they're completely normal and that's actually what makes you so flustered because they feel like they are somehow more transcendent by being more human than oh, just we basic. Met, yeah we were in new york and we met uh, at a at uh, a con for a wonder woman movie courtney was in and we met rosario dawson yeah so cool 
Yeah. So she sat on my lap. She yeah. sat on my lap, and I was literally like, I almost fainted dead away. And she is the coolest. She was just, she was more interested in talking about all the like social justice stuff that she's yeah. doing and all the stuff for her. Um, I lived in the Lower East Side for a while, and right, um, she works with the girls' club down there. And that was the thing. And, and it was so amazing to have those conversations with her because then it just fell away, and you were just like, oh my God, this chick's cool. Who is she? Yeah. Again? Like, you know. Other than she, stunningly beautiful and warm and amazing, and right, right. Other than being like a ex genetic extremely talented, but um, also yeah. just uh, just the kind of person that you're just like, wow, all of that, and you're amazingly cool and smart yes. and super giving. Um, yeah, on that you, note, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> your special sort of like, do you have any? You're uh, you do a lot of work for uh, lupus, right? Yes, lupus I. I've done stuff for, um, I've been I've been working with the Lupus Foundation of America for probably 10 years um, because my mother has lupus. And, um, you know, it's like one of those things where you get on a TV show and you realize like, it's a little ridiculous. Like I essentially, and I've said this a bunch of times, but it's no less true. Um, you know, I, I make out with somebody for a living and, <laughs> And I'm paid really well to like to, for my effort and um, and but there's something that's a little a little hollow. There's something that's kind of missing and like the ability to um, for a while I would do um, t-shirt drives through this company called Prizio and then eventually uh, represent um, and we would literally just like put my face on a t-shirt and and I would want to and the only reason like I, I hate taking selfies you know but. I was like, I should do this because this raises money and that money goes to an organization that lobbies um, Congress that also helps to raise money for charitable, for grants for scientists and doctors to study not only lupus, but also other um, autoimmune diseases. And I'm like, oh, so that's how I can contribute to the greater good while still making out with somebody for a living, you know? So it's well, pretty great life. While still doing the heavy lifting that you do, Ian. <laughs> what was that? While still doing well, the heavy still lifting doing the you heavy do. heavy lifting that you do at work, Ian. It's tough. I got a hard life. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you should try making out with somebody in voiceover. It's not pretty. Uh, or like, a mocap set. It's it, very awkward. You have to clean the mic. The it's horrible. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Actually, a quick, quick tangent. How does that happen? Because obviously when I was a frog and when I've done other voiceover things for like American Express, I had, didn't need to do uh, making out noises. So what, um, you just approximate the noises that you think it is. Do, do you just I, like put your hand I'm up? I'm kind of I mean, a specialist yeah. in this. I will just say I have made out, I've, I have had relations with Tim Curry three times in three different games. Um, <laughs> nice. um, it is all about the hands, back of the hands. Back of the hands. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a lot of back of the hand stuff. It's a lot of open back mouth hand stuff. But, but I had to make out all the time when I was on regular show um, yeah. with Muscle Man. And all, all we wanted to do, he would be across the room. So we were like long distance making out. And all you want is to look behind the glass and have everyone just like. <laughs> so you just make the grossest noises you possibly can. Yeah, um, and then on a yeah. mocap set, you have to actually feign, like you'll have your your mic coming around off of your head cam, and you just have to like go through the motions, but do it like eighteen inches away from the person. Yeah. Okay. So this it's is social this distance is making out. <laughs> it's social. I mean, this is great. It's all going to be mocap now. I, that's one bar, part of this whole business that I've never done that I want to do so badly. And I don't know who I have to kill to be able to do it. And I mean, I've, I've been up for things where it was like, you're going to go to like Poland for three months and it'll be all motion capture. And I was so excited because I've had multiple friends, including I think our, our, our mutual friend, Alex, who has done lots of motion capture. And it's the purest form of acting because you have like a, a, a gray stick it's like, like being in college it. doing all of your little black box theater. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And it's so like, oh, you get to chew the scenery because you have to be, in some cases, you have to be bigger so that like the, you know, 
whatever yeah. it is, 200 cameras around you, pick all of it up. So you're just like, oh, uh, chewing that scenery. It looks so joyous. I want to do it so badly. And you don't have to worry about angles because there are 360 degrees of cameras all around you. So you don't have to hit like certain lights and things like that. You know, you're yeah. not, there's a lot of freedom to it. There's also some, you know, obviously you don't have a lot of the stuff that you would, you know, you don't have the clothing, things that you might endow. Yeah. Um, you have to make up in your head, but, you know, it helps. You have to feel sexy in spandex. Had a lot of imaginary friends when you were younger. And yeah. cause those come in handy both for voice acting and also pretend on the motion capture volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. That's... But we'll see what we can do, Ian, because apparently we grant a lot of wishes on this sh on this show. Mm -hmm. um, Please. So Please. you know, I'll tell yeah. you if we can. Get, I'll tell them you have uh, making out experience. But They're like, oh great, inches away, and I know the chat's going to go crazy now. Yeah, great. Yeah, we have to get one of our favorite drag queens into an animated show. So as soon as we get that done, you're in a mocap stage. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yes. That's right. We're like Santa Claus. We just grant wishes here. That's what we do. Please. That would be great. So yeah. um, doubling back, uh, yeah, yeah. Back that, to, so uh, working for this cause, mm -hmm. we're talking about lupus five minutes ago. I don't know how we got here. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. uh, we cover all topics here. Um, yeah. No, but it, 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 it is amazing that uh, it's always great when uh, people who have a platform recognize the power that they have with it and can use it to affect some awesome change. So yeah. A question that we love to ask all of our guests is, yeah. who are you voting for? And when we ask that, we don't mean like, who literally are you voting for? But yeah. when you will be casting your ballot this November, what person or people will be on your mind that you want that vote to affect? Yeah. Um, the people that are sort of on my mind are the ones that don't feel as included and i guess there's also maybe the better way to say this is i i would like to vote for i would just like to vote for a more inclusive society because things are very very divided right now and um and so whatever change that can be brought about with i i suppose just sheer kindness and class that can be brought to whatever governmental positions are up for uh, election. But then, um, you know, I, I think there's, even, I've even noticed it myself. I think that when you, uh, there is something to be said about like top down um, feeling and, and behavior. And, and I've even felt with myself, like this sort of things feel very dark. And so suddenly I was always very um, open to, uh, conversation with strangers or like I was more giving with whatever sort of um, money that I would earn. But a lot of that has changed because there's a lot of fear. And so I even felt like I just want the people in uh, the people in power to inspire less fear. And that is one of my biggest things because I think, yes, I can get into like certain, certain policies and, you know, oh, I'm more for like, trade with these countries or something like that i think these are all that's all like very important and you know tariffs and that whole thing is is also like very much about my pay grade but i think um i the thing that i'm voting for this year is for um more inclusivity and empathy and um compassion and there's just uh, there seems to be a lot of that lacking and and i also um I think when it comes to like being a whole person, not to get pedantic for a moment, which is probably exactly what I'm going to do. But, um, you know, I, I think that there's something to be said about like politicians and people that are elected are, are not like the end all be all. They won't like make everything right, but they are very much a starting point. And I think that um, it says a lot about you as a person and how you interact with your with your everyday life, judging on who you voted for and like what you, what you're voting for. I don't think like um, somebody who works at like a local food bank and sees the amount of poverty that's rampant in most um, cities and like um, food fragility that is experienced for most Americans. Um, I don't think it was proper English, but uh, we got but it. We got it. I don't think they then turn around and say, yeah, I think 
we should have more policies to limit this. You know what I mean? Like, so I think I want um, the people that I vote to hopefully put in office, I want them to reflect um, the values that I have. Sure. And, uh, so I'm going to go more in that direction. And no, no candidate is 100% that, you know? I, you know, even the people that I know I'm going to vote for, I don't agree with everything that they're doing, but I still think like, that's the best candidate. And so, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question or if that was me just no, it does. philosophizing out of my ass. Completely. Um, and it's yeah. a really valid point. It's in this election, so many people have said like, we're not going to get, I mean, in no election are you going to get anyone who's perfect and checks all the boxes for you. But, uh, no one's getting their first choice is what's going around a lot on the internet, et cetera. But yeah. to, to look at your candidates and say, what if, it, if this person is a door to something, what is that door opening to? It may not, that door may not be perfect, but if, if we're going to move in one direction or another, what is the direction that that person is going to take us in or who are they going to position to take us in that direction? And so, you know, if you look at that door and you see possibilities for empathy and inclusivity and kindness, then, you know, unfortunately, because we have a two party system right. um, and with money in politics and, and things like that, that we don't need to hash over today, but um, you do get a limited choice. So, yeah, there are times that know, I what, wish. That what is this person yeah. adore to? Yeah, yeah. I wish I wish that there could be, um, well, I mean, I guess that's another political situation, but the whole two party system thing is like, I wish there could be multiple parties and I wish they could be on the same ticket because there are times where I look, I'm like, well, what if this person and this person were together? Wouldn't that be dope? Yeah. Like, wouldn't that, uh, I, but you know, a lot of yeah. changes need to be made, but uh, you know, we'll solve, we'll solve one problem at a time here on Instagram live. But it's valid, <laughs> you know? it's valid, you know, that, that comes back to the idea of sort of like, collaborating inclusivity yeah. you know we have to find those places where we can and it's a really interesting concept and if it's something that you're interested in by all means uh that you know just to the general public out there you can 100 percent work towards that not three months before voting but if right, you know right. if you believe that we should have multiple parties that is something that um takes time so it's not just about voting in this election and then forgetting it. Our democracy is not set it and forget it. It is yeah, yeah, we yeah. vote in November and then we go back to paying attention and we keep our uh, we keep our representatives, whether you voted for them or not, whether right. you like what they're doing or not, we keep them accountable. That's right, our right. job. That's the other side of of being, you know, they are our representatives, but we have to be in the conversation. Right, right. And you know, I also think it's like it's not like, um, maybe this is a really bad analogy, but I remember being in college and like not wanting to work out as much, like not wanting to go into the gym and lift weights. Mm -hmm. And it was always like, I would rather just like play a sport or play, you know, uh, like play basketball or play soccer or something. And I don't want like, that was always fun for me. I didn't think like, oh, I gotta go lift weights because now I'm gonna be an actor and I may need to be shirtless or something, I don't know. And, and I swear to God, I'm getting back to what we're talking about, but like, I think I always had this image that it was so much harder than it was. And then once I got into the rhythm and got into the habit and practice of going and lifting weights and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, this is just part of my life. And it is something that enriches me, but also doesn't take that much time. And I think that's the same thing with being a good citizen in that like, oh, you know what, actually, because there aren't elections or in my part of the world every single day. And they don't take nine hours, you know? So there's part of me that's like, um, I feel like with just a little bit of upkeep and, and maybe, and I don't mean to necessarily appeal to people's laziness, but like kind of, you know, where it's actually not that difficult. And, yeah. and it's just a question of keeping on it. You know, I still, I have voted in a lot of like, for a lot of local uh, politicians and obviously the the on the national scale and i still have so much time to waste 
you know like i think there's like it's like you can still live the right. life that you want and still vote you know um i it's, i don't understand it yeah yeah it's funny that you, i like your working out analogy because and it's also, funny you use that one you look better yeah. and you feel better and you're healthier when you work out so if we use that as a good citizen analogy um yeah that's the flip side of that yeah you got to go to the gym yeah you got to go vote but the end result is that you're better for it yeah, yeah. so i'll take it 10 points to gryffindor and not to do yeah. a shameless plug, but we will, because that's what we're here for. Um, but the funny thing is, is that that is sort of the the impetus of the platform that we're using, Motivote, which is in the pinned comment below. Pinned um, comment below. Go check it out. Sorry, yeah. Shout out. Um, it was invented by uh, these, coll these college business students who did psychological research about you know what gets people to do small actions, like right. going to the gym, like. Yeah. You know, and comparing voting to going to the gym in the sense of like, oh, I meant to do that on Monday and I didn't. Uh, but Wednesday's mm -hmm. leg day, you know, like mm -hmm. the, the, the ways that we talk ourselves out of things. And w one of the cool things about Motivote is that because it breaks everything down into small bite sized actions that also yeah. have a little bitty reward system. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, it's like the old right. like marshmallow trick, you know, that yeah. we like our instant gratification, you know, so right, right. Um, yeah, so that's one of the reasons that we use that. But motivate or not, um, I think it's important to make whatever gets you to the polls, um, you know, break it up into little pieces and have that yeah. little reward system like and whatever you do in life, if there's something that's over, uh, difficult to overcome, that's a great way to do it is to just take it in small chunks and, and offer yourself those little positive reinforcements and then you'll get it done. Um, that yeah. also goes Or do for, it with friends. Yeah. Oh like my God, that, yeah. You know, one of the Which things is we what talk we've about talked is, about a lot. Yeah. If you're just joining us, we are a nerd's vote um, and we yeah. are always looking for fun ways to get people to vote. And um, a lot of the times we talk about collaborating where when, you know, when voting time comes around, you're working, you're busy, oh my gosh, you've got to look at if you're in California, there's a million ballot measures. And if you can now in COVID times, you know, get together on a Zoom call with your friends and kind of, you know, say, all right, let's split up this work. Let's let you research one candidate, you research this ballot measure, and we'll reconvene in, you know, half an hour and, and yeah. share what we learned about it so that we can all make not the same decision, but just informed decisions, then yeah. you're also creating some community and you're sharing the workload. So it's not so overwhelming. And then you get to like, I always say this, if you're of age, uh, you yeah. know, enjoy a post, uh, post education cocktail or, you know, if you're not or uh, five. You're grappling with cloth. Um, and you, and, and it, yeah. you, you <laughs> like, created like community around voting um, and also, you're not working so hard, and it's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's also, um, it just. I, I think you're right about the whole thing. It's like it just makes you feel very much like um, it makes you feel better, you know. Um, and it will affect your life in a positive way, unless you go out and get tanked after every time you vote. In which case, maybe the, that's not. Maybe Which maybe cut out. The, if you're of age. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, we are almost near the end of our hour, uh, but I wanted to get to a couple fan questions. I couldn't find the one that the person asked, but somebody asked the question, um, which of your of the Pretty Little Liars characters do you think would make a good president? Oh, I mean, Spencer Hastings. <laughs> uh, it's Ryan Belzario. She, um, because she well, I went already, to school with. <laughs> yeah, she's like already on that track, you know? Um, and I don't think anybody else is as responsible um, as her. She's really overcome adversity, such as like having an evil twin. Um, <laughs> and so like, I think she- It did... happens. Yeah, I don't think, I feel like Ezra would be somewhere in like the Department of Education maybe, or you know, I bet he worked for the EPA, or he's just probably a, a hippie in the woods. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I think, honestly, I think Spencer would be the best the president that I would vote for. Awesome. Uh, good question, uh, or a good answer. So uh, let me see. All right. So the way that we usually sign off the show, we've interviewed a lot of voice actors, and we ask that we tell them, hey, could you sign off in a character that the audience chooses? 
I'm going to ask fun. something a little different this way. And if this is a, yeah. if this, if this causes mental stress or something, my apologies, you can opt yeah. out. But so many people in the questions and in the chat have brought up the smoothie commercial. I don't know what that <laughs> is. Is there a way that you could encourage people to vote and incorporate the smoothie commercial? Yes. Ooh, that's, that's tricky. Um, so what they're talking about is uh -huh. my yes. first ever paid job as an actor, if you can call it that, was while I was still in college and I got a local, um, do either of you know Sheets? Like the, Joe, the company? Yeah. There's one yeah. right near so, my old house. <laughs> yes, exactly. And everybody knows it. And it's usually like, yeah, I remember Sheets because it's where you went after you were like, or at least for me, where you got things after a hard night in college. But um, the, so I was like, they were introducing smoothies to their vast array of culinary delights. And so they decided to do like an old coffee house vibe, like a beet sort of coffee house. And for some reason, I, there was an actual uh, thing because they were introducing like different kinds of cappuccinos. Mm -hmm. And so my buddy, who's actually in my class at school, got that segment and got like got that gig. Sure. And so he was like cappuccino, you know, blah, blah, or whatever. And then for me, they're doing the same thing, but for smoothies. Even though smoothies, I don't know if those are common in like, you know, smoky poetry houses from the 1960s. Um, but 60s, no. 90s, yes. <laughs> yes, maybe. Yeah, I was going to say, it gets your throat all good. Uh, uh, you yeah. can't do your beat poetry. Yeah, but I, so I, um, it was the first thing I ever did. My hair was the longest it's ever been mm -hmm. um, because I was in college and I guess couldn't afford haircuts or it was just too lazy. And uh, yeah, so I was in, like, I I would do this thing where I got, I'm trying to think, like, do I have like a fake microphone somewhere? Here, I'll use this box of incense. Um, you know, I, I appropriate, like, very appropriate. I got in and I had like my arms crossed and I was like, smoothie, you know, and I tried to get as like, like raspy and, and uh, as, as I could, except I had this like, you know, virgin windpipes because I was still so young and hadn't been broken by the world. Um, and but, uh, but and yeah, being a frog. Think, mm -hmm. how do I utilize that to make people go vote? Um, the voice is a start. <laughs> yeah. Please go vote. Um, I don't know if I sound like that. You're going to go look this up now and be like, it doesn't sound like that yeah, at I all. Think somebody like was post, I think somebody was posting the lyrics before. It's something about, oh, sweet surrender straight from the blue. <laughs> I thought they were quoting yeah. Sarah McLaughlin lyrics. <laughs> oh, sweet surrender. And, but I also, I was so stiff too, because again, first on camera job. And yeah. so I was like, oh, sweet surrender straight from my blender. And it was <laughs> rough. <laughs> like, my friends never let me live it. Like, to this day, you know, I'll be home and they'll be like, smoothie. I'm like, shut up, Chris. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I, I'm trying to think, like, you know, go vote. November. Make it happen friends i don't know <laughs> like equally stiff brilliant <laughs> equally yeah equally equally stiff but maybe no this so, tears does something to the whole delivery yeah yeah it uh it cheapens it that's what i mean um <laughs> well everybody's screaming in the comments so i think you've done it i think you've i congrats. think you've broken your fan base congrats <laughs> that's that's right. I, I, you, have broken you just see head. like the number of people just log off yeah <laughs> it's like done. we're going down yeah. to three people watching uh, uh yeah Ian, thanks so much for joining us. This was so awesome. No, oh, thank you for having and me. And thank yeah. you to Alex Wilkin Regan for connecting us because yes. you are as she advertised, is amazing. as lovely and funny. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Thank and, you, and thank you to you folks as well for, you know, taking the time to do this and to spread the word about, you know, getting out there and exercising your civic duty and your right. Uh, so I, I'm very mm -hmm. grateful to, to you folks because it, it really... It's a lot and it matters. It we really appreciate matters. it. And for all of yeah. you out there, uh, if you haven't done it yet, uh, you could do it right after we're done with this in 42 seconds. So uh, go to the link that's pinned in the comment, nerdsvote.motivote.us to sign up with us and to get on the bandwagon to mm -hmm. get registered and to get voting and to win prizes along the way because what else? It, you know, prizes, let's, let's get through this positively, shall we? <laughs> yes, yes. Indeed. And you can go to nerdsvote.com and check out what we do. Yeah. And get yes. the sexy shirt. <laughs> it's, but, uh, uh, can I? No, I just look. <laughs> that was bad. It's amazing. Uh, All right. Thank you, Ian. Please come on with us again. You were awesome. 
I will. I would love to be back. So thank you for having me. And we'll, uh, we'll chat soon. All right. We'll see Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye Thanks, everybody, for watching.